Hey there, everybody! Welcome Hello. to the State of Decay 2 stream. Uh, I am sort of, I guess, your host, uh, Jeffrey Card. Uh, and over here next to me, uh, we've got Andy Collins, who's a lead writer on State of Decay I can't 2. can't look at myself and the camera at the same time. One of them looks good, but then I can't see myself. <laughs> yeah, I'll we got a, we got a weird, elaborate setup in this room. Hi, um, everybody. So yeah, so that is Andy, and we are here. We got uh, we're chatting with folks. Uh, we got the Twitch up here, uh, the Twitch chat up here on the screen. We've also got folks on Mixer watching us, and we're excited because uh, State of Decay Two is less than two weeks away from release. Thank you, Social Escort. Yeah, it's going to come out uh, what like on the 18th for folks who pre-ordered the uh, the Ultimate Edition, and it's going to come out on the 22nd for everybody, and that is just getting ridiculously Wait, close. That's this month. That's this month. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, i got to finish writing all the text in the game. And the, yeah, no. It's supposed to be done or something? It's supposed to be done. It's kind of ridiculous. Brant um, is late. He's usually the one who's playing the game. So if you want to play the game, you totally can, Andy. Uh, you can grab, So that controller is what we're going to use. Oh. So, uh, yeah, Andy's going to... Andy, oh, yeah, so Andy's got to sit in the Brant position. Uh, <laughs> which is, that is the best Brant impression I have ever seen. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so let's just, let's get to that. Uh, oh, here comes Brant. Brant's headed, Brant's headed in. So we're playing the PAX demo like we usually do. Once we hit release, we'll be able to play a proper uh, normal build of the game. But for now, we're doing these 10-minute seg segments oh, out of the middle of the game uh, from the PAX I demo. I my Brant impression. <laughs> yeah, he's, right. <laughs> he's in the Brant pose. That's so, how I said it might work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so everybody say hi to Brant. No, hi, Brant. don't bother. When you were late, people were theorizing that tacos were probably involved. Oh, when course. aren't they? <laughs> yeah. When are tacos not involved? Uh, in the next two weeks of my life. I don't, they don't have tacos in England. Not real ones. I'm oh, that's vacation, right, yeah. So I'm pretty much checked out. Yeah, yeah we've I've... got a we've got a big stream planned for uh, release day. We're gonna have lots of people in here. But Andy's not. The reason Andy's in here today is because Andy is like saying sayonara. He's peacing out, going to England. Uh, so we're gonna have him in here today to talk about you can writing and voice and stuff. In the game. And nope. and English Bull and Red Monkey. Oh, that's true. There's so many people you can go and visit. I'll say Enzo. hi to you from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Dell Del probably would just have you over, right? Come on, Dell. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, so, in, I'm inviting people to your house now. So yeah, uh, Four Powerful Game asked if the if this video, when, when we're done, if it's going to be uploaded to YouTube. And yes, that is the plan. We're, we always try to post these to YouTube these days. We used to be slack about it a while ago, but uh, Wonder has been getting on us to make sure we actually post these suckers to YouTube every time. So you should be able to find that just actually like an hour or so after we're done. We'll usually get them posted. So And Wonder does a good job of putting like keywords on them and stuff so people can search it and find the video and get us lots of sweet, delicious views. I'm pretty sure Survivor just offered to let you stay at his house for free. That's all right. <laughs> we're, we're covered. Thank you very much, though. <laughs> I am no longer 22 years old. I do not need to rely on free couches. I'm 48, and I need to rely on free couches. So. <laughs> now, there's anything wrong with a free couch, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Shadow69 is asking um, uh, how close this build is. Uh, to the actual final game. There's definitely a lot of bugs we fixed between the time we burned this sucker out to the time that uh, the game's gonna, you know, be hitting your boxes. So, you know, lots of little weird things, you know, you're gonna see, you know, be different. But the overall, just the way the gameplay works is accurate. I mean, you know, the craziness... Yeah, the minute-to-minute -minute stuff is, is pretty much locked, except for bug fixing. Uh, but there's months and months between th when we cut this build for PAX yeah. and... And, and, and what you're going to get in a, in a couple of weeks. So, so should I start? Yeah, go ahead and get started. Yeah, let's right. let's get in there. So I noticed a question go by while we're mm -hmm. starting up, uh, asking about, uh, taking us back to the original State of Decay and asking us about Black Fever and whether that has anything to do with Blood Plague. Yeah. And the answer is, uh, not really. Uh, blood Plague is really sort of its own new thing. Uh Black Fever was one of those names that people threw around in the early days after the outbreak to try to describe what was going on and, and why people were getting sick. Uh, but uh, the situation has worsened since then, and Blood Plague is a, a relatively new threat that our survivors are dealing with. So yeah, It's not really a one-to-one -one thing. Like, like, no, there's the two, no it's real the link. Two are, 
this certainly the two play a similar role in that you know the fear of disease during the zombie apocalypse is definitely it's a it's a serious part of the whole experience and they serve similar roles but we're thinking we think of blood plague as being something that is much more advanced in its scariness yes than uh, than black fever hey uh, Brant yeah the way I set the, the cameras up you got to lean back a little bit or, or scoot to the right or something no one can see your beautiful uh, beautiful beardy face no one wants to see this face why do you think I wear black I'm just gonna put the hood up <laughs> nobody, nobody can tell whether you're on camera or not ninja <laughs> uh, so let's see here. Sickness, a status effect. Uh, no, the the concept of characters just sort of, you know, getting the sniffles or what have you is not not really part of our game anymore. We've we've amped up the concept of sickness. If you're sick, it means your character has blood plague, and that's a much more serious deal than just oh, I've got a little cough. I don't feel so good. Yeah, that uh, means like so was it was it worth keeping a small version of that when we've got a big one to worry about? Keep things clear and very different from each other. Yeah, exactly. So, so if you're sick, that means there's basically a timer on you, and if, you know, if, if without intervention, you're going to die. Uh, and so the players got to, you know, you got to get in there and do something about this person before they, before they so. <laughs> Takuro Spirit asks, can Lily finally die when she gets sick? And uh, Lily specifically isn't really part of the, isn't really the issue. But yes, characters who get sick will very likely die unless you do something Take about it. Take it easy on Lily Takuro. Yeah. yeah, people are being, people are way too mean to Lily. I love Lily. So let's just, let's, uh, let's leave her alone. Leave Lily alone! <laughs> uh, I think... Shadow, t uh, like, very technical questions about numbers and things, we're not the right people to answer. We're all the flighty artsy types on the game, so... You know, we got a designer, a writer, and a uh, and an artist. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to get us talking about you know details about frame rate caps and stuff uh -oh. like that. What? No, oh, that's not good. oh, you this ran over bloater. Out. Bloater gas. <laughs> so I saw a question go past there mm -hmm. about uh, sort of how blood plague came into the game. What I actually think is a great one. Uh, I want us to like write a dev diary about it someday because I think it's a fascinating look, not only into story creation but sort of into design because it, it's fills a variety of purposes for us. I'm not sure we can do it justice here. Yeah. Other than to, to say it was a really interesting collaborative effort that came about from people oh within the studio suggesting ideas, the, the design team riffing on those ideas, and then ultimately coming together into something that ended up being a pretty significant part of the, the core story, core experience of the game. And, and it's, a, it's a neat way of showing how game design is this strange iterative process and you can never really predict where the next great idea is going to come from. Yeah, I mean a lot of the the sort of the best parts of Blood Plague were actually, you know, weren't necessarily design needs, they were suggestions by artists. I mean, I think, you know, Doug has wanted for years to put, you know, to, to, to put things like the blood like the plague hearts in, into the game. And this is sort of like he find like when he heard we were talking about Blood Plague, he's like, "Well, here's this thing I want to do." <laughs> and you know, and it it really sort of shaped the way that we uh, ended up developing it. Oh, hey, there's a Blood Plague heart right there. Will fans ever get another chance to get their faces scanned into the game? Uh, nothing planned at this point. Uh, I mean, anything can happen, but uh, I think we're uh, right now we're not looking to expand our, our face range. But uh, yes. who knows? If we sell, well, hey, if we sell 50 million copies of this game, <laughs> there's we might uh, look for ways to increase the range of player faces. There's in the a world. few. There's a few things that I mean, we're always capable of scanning our faces. It's what I mean. Each, each face takes a certain amount of memory, and um, while some of them are streamed, that makes it okay. It also takes a long time for our artists to yeah. Uh, yeah. set it it's, up. It's, it's, it's not magic. Yeah, it's, it's, not a it's a pretty significant investment in time in the studio. But, never say never, yeah. because uh, depending on how State of Decay does, yeah, 50 million copies. All right, Garl Burp's got 95% of it covered. Excellent. I will come <laughs> I will come to your house and scan it yourself, myself, if we um, sell 50 million copies. <laughs> um, a Blade of Meat that Shield. That is not a promise. A Blade of Meat Shield says he desperately wishes he could about be out here for the launch party, which we didn't mention, by the way, on May 22nd, wait, it, no, May 17th, 17th, May 17th, that's right, sorry, May 17th, I've got 22nd on the brain, May 17th, uh, we're doing a community launch party at the lab, and so I think that, I think our, our Twitter account has announced it, so go check us out on Twitter, um, and find the details on that, because if you're in the area, uh, we would love to have you guys out here to check out the game with us at the very earliest point when anybody's able to play it, so, uh, I see... 
Uh, questions about uh, characters coming back from the first game. Somebody asked about Jacob, perhaps coming back. Uh, be uh, Lily's brother, Jacob Ritter, I believe. Yeah, Jacob Ritter. Uh, we have. I'll just say this: there are two familiar voices coming <laughs> back in State of Decay Two. Uh, yeah, don't give them too I, much. I, I'm not going to spoil anything else, but just uh, when you start playing the game, just listen to the voices on your radio. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> That worked, yeah. Because one thing we had to bear in mind was, in some of your games, certain characters died. And in some of your games, other characters died. And so, simply bringing them back, we, that, that's not an easy proposition, because we don't want to just invalidate the experiences that you guys had with State of Decay 1. Uh, and so, we had to be very judicious about who and how uh, we decided to bring back. But, uh, yeah, keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open for it. Some folks have already heard some, uh, some dialogue from one of the voices I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, that was a, was a fun character to write for. Not as fun as the other one, but <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Uh, uh, Rooney115 asks, uh, so, so they've seen video where people did went through the tutorial experience. Um, and they asked, you know, are the four starting pairs from the tutorial always the same, or do they uh, vary in appearance and traits? So, as far as appearance goes, the appearance is pretty much locked. I mean, we wanted yes. to make him look really fancy and awesome in the front end, and so we needed to burn in those appearances to, to make that work. And, and to be able to show them on the select screens, like yeah. we couldn't put procedurally generated faces on those. We had to decide on them. So appearance-wise, each of those pairs is the same, as much as we would have liked to vary them even more than they already are. Yeah, but as far as their their names, their traits, their identities, who they are, that's different every single time. In fact, if you, if you, uh, if you start up the tutorial and you're looking at your selection and you don't like anybody, just back out, start again, and you'll get a whole new set. Uh, so there's still plenty of options. And if you go and, and you're playing co-op in your friend's game, and they've got a tutorial character, and you've got a tutorial character, they're still going to be different from each other. They're, they're always going to be unique, uh, which is one of the hallmarks of this game, is that all of the characters, even when they're similar, there's always some way in which they're unique. You know, it's, there's so many different factors. Uh, somebody's asking about the question. I'm about the FPS on the stream versus the game. Oh. I'm looking at the game. It looks really smooth. Yeah, I'm sorry. This has been happening to us. The it. stream is kind of choppy. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with our hardware. I feel like we're actually planning on getting some new uh, streaming hardware in here pretty soon. But yeah, periodically we just have these weird slowdowns with the frame rate um, on yeah on, on our streaming stuff, and I really don't know what's causing yeah, it. Yeah, this this is not the game. This is this is some connection. Yeah, yeah and, and you'll see that it's it's just gone back to normal again. I think I don't know. Maybe our capture card's getting old and just sometimes it gets overworked or something. I'm not sure what it is. But, uh, but yeah, you can see that's the actual frame rate of the game that we're really playing. So, sorry about that, but yeah, it's not... <laughs> it's definitely a problem on my end over here, not on Brant's end over there. It's Questions? Ne yeah, it's uh, never a problem. Devoid, no, devoid, devoid Bra has already declared that it's my fault. Folks who want, already want to know all the secrets for what the Blood Plague is and where the Plague oh, Hearts crap. came from and all that sort of thing. Uh, oh, Feral. You're just going to have to wait and be Child patient. Feral. Uh, we storytellers don't like uh, showing all our cards uh, at the beginning, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> no, no Collins is intended. Yes, yeah, so uh, we've got ideas for how to roll out more explanation for what's going on, but for right now we want you focus on the same thing your survivors are, which is living from day to day, keeping your, keeping your folks fed, uh, making sure everyone stays healthy, that sort of thing. The game's just like in the first game, it wasn't really about the secrets of zombies. It's about keeping people alive. Oh, hello! <laughs> oh, boy. I can't let that screamer bring uh, we want the same to be true for, for oh, this game, boy. at least for, for the uh, the time being. Oh, uh, so, Garlic Burp is calling oh. you Sir Robin and, oh. and uh, telling talking about how you bravely ran away. Oh, no. No, no. And not for very long, though. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Uh, Welcome to State of Decay, everybody! Welcome oh, to the news. end of the PAX demo in State of Decay, everybody. <laughs> because this, they, we programmed this to happen in the last, like, two minutes. But, but, but I'm going to say, over, see ya. Yeah, though, this, this exact thing, though, happens to me when I play the game at home, too. Uh, it's just, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. Like, like when, I'm, when I run out of gas. Whenever I run out of gas in the middle of the night, there's always a juggernaut. That's just how it goes. Not because we programmed it that way, but just because. That's that's life. Hi, Robert. Oh, uh, uh, TV Vich was like, uh, I didn't know we could climb like that. Sweet. 
when you saw you climb up on the uh, on, on that you know whatever what was that a mobile home or something you climbed up yeah, on that was a uh, construction the, a mobile oh, construction trailer the terrain is definitely uh, got more it's, I would say more interactable it's a little more reactive uh, we, we have fences that'll break we have it seems like there's more stuff yeah to climb that, on. that's the big that's going to be the biggest thing for people who played the first game is like. You can drive through fences rather through than around some them. Some fences. fences. Some if fences. If they're, if if they look flimsy. If they're the smaller wood fences, yes. Don't try to drive through the big, fat log wood fences. Cause yeah, if it looks like a stockade, don't drive through it. Yeah. If it looks like you wouldn't even think about driving through it with your own car, take that hint. But the, <laughs> the, the, the very fact... I'm not driving with you. The very fact <laughs> that we can actually drive through fences is massive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and you can also knock, tr knock uh, uh, tricycles around. So. Yep. There are no more tricycles of Gibraltar. How <laughs> bad can starvation get in the game, Jeffrey? There's a question somebody oh, asked. Yeah. Like what, what ramifications can actually come from that? So uh, yeah, so when so starvation severely it, it has two major effects. Number one, it takes down your stamina. Um, and so you, you'll if, when, when you play the game, you will def especially if you played the first game, you'll understand when your stamina drops by like half. Suddenly, the, like combats that, that were com that were no problem before become desperately hard, and uh, and so it takes tanks your stamina, which is really bad, and then it also tanks your morale. And what that's going to do is people are going to start, you know, when when people can't get food in your community, they're going to feel like they're going to start feeling like, you know, I might as well go somewhere else. And so you're going to start bleeding survivors, which actually helps you solve the problem because when you've got fewer people, that's fewer mouths to feed, um, and it gets a little bit easier to keep up with your food needs, but. You can't control who's going to want to go, and so you could lose one of your favorite people uh, if, if you can't keep them fed. Question about dialogue. Uh, someone is asking about dialogue that didn't make it in. Um, as, there's sort of multiple answers to that question. Uh, we often have to write dialogue, a voiceover dialogue, well before content is done. So sometimes we're taking best guesses uh, on either whether that's a mission uh, concept or type of, co of content, and not all of that makes it, right? Same as, like, scenes that uh, end up on the cutting room floor of a movie, uh, and that might end up anywhere from, you know, the equivalent of storyboarding to it's all filmed and edited and everything, and then in the last second they decide to cut it out. So, yeah, there's a fair amount of dialogue uh, that didn't make it into the final game. We're always looking for ways to repurpose that. Um, so I, I, it's not, that's not really a very interesting uh, answer because it's not really <laughs> a very interesting problem. Like it's just sometimes it's like, oh, we were gonna tell this kind of story, we built it, it didn't work very well, uh -oh. so we took it out. Right? Yeah. It's it's uh -oh. it's not it's not fascinating kind of thing. Uh, Long day in rehab on Twitch uh, says the driving in this game looks so much better. You know, uh, Foggy and Tyler and other programmers put uh, a lot of effort into that, and so yeah, so they're gonna they'll be thrilled to hear your feedback uh, once it gets in there. Because for me, I I agree with you. Like driving around in this game is it's some of the best open world driving I've ever experienced. Mostly because I really like cars that you that it's really easy to sort of drift around corners in, just flipping around, hitting zombies. Getting into melee combat with zombies in your car is, is, is one of the hallmarks of this game. You can really do it, uh, even better than you could before. Just pun punches, literally punching zombies with your car, basically. <laughs> I've, been, uh, I've been running over a tricycle just to prove our point. <laughs> uh, Captain Assassin asks if having co-op players in your game uh, increases your labor stat. Uh, no, it doesn't. Labor stat is, is all about sort of your community management uh, choices. Uh, when somebody comes in from the outside, just like if you invited somebody from another enclave to be your follower for a little while, they don't give you extra labor. Um, it's, it's kind of the same deal. They're a visitor from the outside. Like, you know, when you invite a guest to your house, you don't make them clean the bathroom. You know, you, you clean the bathroom for them. Any Infinity War references. Uh, <laughs> you do realize we finished writing this game like a year ago, so no. <laughs> yeah. uh, that said, I would say the closest we get to that, there is, uh, I'm not gonna, so I won't go into details, there is a particular mission arc that features extensive use of uh, movie quotes. Uh, that one was quite a lot of fun to write. So when you, when you find that one, uh, you'll at least get a few uh, good action movie quotes, but nothing specifically from, uh, from Infinity War. Though I think the, uh, the particle effects when you hit a zombie with a car really hard are kind of familiar. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure they, um, they copied us. <laughs> yeah. So Chikuro Spirit's like, no Thanos mode? Like, no, no Thanos mode. Uh, uh, Claude Dute asks, will there be badass grandmas? 
Um, so I don't think we've got a trait that specifically says that someone is a grandmother, uh, but there are definitely, we've got people of all ages, uh, and it, well, not all ages. We don't go very young, but we definitely have some, have some, some characters that, w that look older. In fact, we've got um, sort of behind-the-scenes traits in the game that sort of tell the difference between older characters and younger characters for things like naming um, and certain kinds of traits where it's like, you know, people, someone who's complaining about, um, you know, like the, the, the physical problems you suffer in old age. Uh, for instance, you know, there's certain characters who are old who will have those complaints and other characters who, who aren't. So, and it's definitely it a to voice variety as well. Uh, That's A couple true, of yeah. our voice actors uh, gave us uh, voice performances that are a little older than sort of the traditional, like, 30 to 40 year old range, and you'll run into those folks from time to time as well. More of that. Uh, base sizes. Bases uh, come in different sh shapes and sizes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The starter, the starter bases, bases are really are, pretty are, small. Are you know straightforward and, and pretty simple, but they they get significantly larger. Uh, yeah, they range from like, like the bridge fort. I think is one of the smaller bases. Like that, that it's still it, it is a base you could win the game with, you know, and, and you could have a, you know, do some pretty good stuff with it. It's got a large slot up on the roof and everything, but it is pretty small. It, it's for if you want to run a small community. But then yeah, we got we got some bases that are actually that are pretty darn large too. Ooh. So two good questions coming past oh, here. But first, let, let me quickly say yeah. we're having one of those weird frame rate problems again. But uh, that is just on the side of our streaming stuff. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but the game is still running just fine. Just yeah. I gotta say that out loud because people coming in are gonna look at it and be like, "Hey, what's wrong with the frame rate?" This, this game's game? terrible. I need uh, to figure sorry. out what's going on with our with our streaming setup, but that is it's not the fault of the game. Uh, Zach Tactic, yeah, absolutely. We'll be continuing to pay attention to game performance. Uh, we 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 plan to support this game for a significant period of time. We already have DLC announced for the the coming yeah. months, and uh, we're gonna we love this game. We know that folks are going to love it out there, so we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep this game in good shape, just same yeah. way that that uh, the studio did for the first one. And it actually it's easier to do things uh, uh, to address things like performance after the game comes out because we'll have this huge you know group of people who are all playing it, and uh, and it, that gives us more data that we can work with to try to understand what is going right and wrong uh, behind right. the scenes. Alfred Ben uh, asked my favorite question, <laughs> yeah, because this was basically my job, the, the core of my job for for at least the first couple of years of this this game. How do you handle voice acting and character personality with random characters? Uh, it's hard. That's a, yeah, <laughs> the, the short answer is it's not easy. It's a really weird kind of writing. And honestly, if I had worked on more games, more particularly single player action games, uh, I might not have thought that what we did was possible because it was so weird and nobody really does it. Uh, but I didn't know any better. So, <laughs> uh, the first game had half a dozen ish different character voices that you could meet. Like, uh, the, the Marcus yeah. voice was on Marcus, obviously, but it was also on lots of other people. Yeah. At release, it was on about half the other characters. Yeah. <laughs> which was kind of ridiculous, uh, but yeah. And, and, you know, that's just. The nature of our game demands that we have lots of different playable characters, uh, but you can't have an infinite number of voices. You have to draw the line somewhere. We ended up uh, for State of Decay 2 with 14 different playable character voices, uh, evenly split between male and female, uh, across a variety of ethnic backgrounds, ages. Uh, so we tried to establish that sort of level of, of diversity right from the get-go. And then for each individual voice, it was about walking a really narrow line between uh, completely no. generic. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Completely generic <laughs> and very, very specific. I didn't want, when I was working with my team of writers, I didn't want a voice that the second time you met it, you'd be like, oh, I already know that character. Like, they're. Yeah. That, that could, you know, the second time you meet a character that sounds like Bob Newhart, you know, with all the sort of ums and ahs, or Bobcat Goldthwait, or some <laughs> really, really super recognizable voice, you're not going to believe that there are two people in the world that sound like that. Uh, so we but, but at the same time, if you went the other way, then you, and, and all the voices were really generic, you wouldn't even be able to tell the people with different voices from each other. Right, uh, right. right. Every one of them her. sounded like the same... 30 year old generic white dude like that that's just as bad the other direction because then we're giving up the opportunity to have that flexibility uh -oh. so you'll be the folks that tell us whether we hit the mark or not ultimately uh, I think the writers and actors did a really good job uh, but the proofs in the pudding like they say 
So uh, I look forward to hearing folks. Oh boy, he's gonna die. Uh, I look forward to hearing folks talk about where we did it right, where we maybe didn't quite hit the mark, and how we might be able to improve. You know, next time we do something like this. Yeah, we really want to stay engaged. So we can it's a super it's interesting challenge, uh, and it was a lot of fun to tackle it. But uh, whoops, you're dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't but, survive you know, that. Like I said, we we were basically inventing this system as we went. So, <laughs> so uh, Aiden and Danny's asked a couple of times, uh, can the zombies climb over barbed wire fences? Um, in the so. Uh, no, and we've actually been, yeah, we've been, we've been pretty careful to sort of uh, to draw a fine line between, you know, there's fences that the player can climb over and fences that the zombies can climb over, and that's the same list. Uh, in the original game, there were a lot of fences that the player couldn't climb over because they were barbed wire or spiked or something, yeah, we but the zombies the, could still do it. We wanted the zombies to show that they didn't care, um, Yeah, and it, it just didn't read very well in the first game, so we said we're not going to let anybody climb over... Uh, Barbed yeah. fences this time. And then Weagle One over on Mixer has been f trying to field some questions about carrying rucksacks. Uh, and it's, I, I, I'm not, I haven't caught, kept up with the entire thing, but I th to answer what I think the question is, um, if you're out uh, scavenging with a follower and, and you pick up a rucksack and you want them to pick up a rucksack too, it's really easy to just walk up to them, swap to controlling them and have them pick up a rucksack too, and then both of you can take your rucksacks home, uh, yet you can easily switch back and forth between characters while you're out, uh, and everybody can carry a rucksack if you want, but really, where you want to stick your rucksacks is in the trunk of a car, uh, because you can carry, like, each character can only carry one rucksack at a time, but depending on what vehicle you get, you could have six, eight rucksacks all piled up in there, and that's, that's how you want to really be getting the bulk resources home. I know what I'm driving. Let's see, what's <laughs> in, let's see if there's anything in the back. No. All right, now. Oh no! Oh no! Oh man, you, you're not. Well, I've got to say, you're wasting bullets, but um, shooting that leg off actually was totally worth it. So, never mind. One of the advantages of the uh, sharpshooter skill is that you are way more likely to successfully dismember zombies with gunshots. So, uh, I like to take the sharpshooter skill out with um, with uh, something full auto and just t take it and just you know squat down and like take an entire horde out at the legs. So somebody had asked about about whether cars are still like as prone to flipping um, and um, no, but also we um, we heard your cries of pain and cars can be recovered. Yeah, so if you blow up a car, if you flip a car, you uh, unless you there's probably some way you can do it if you really try. Really try to get it lost off a cliff or something like that. There, uh, you know, there might be a way to lose a car, but it is way harder now to permanently lose well, a car than it was. Yeah, I mean, even if it flips over completely, um, like this. Oh, please! Oh, darn it! <laughs> um, you can still get it back in the river, like you, you can, know, just you, like you do. You can still get it back. Yeah. And even if it blows up, the stuff in the back is not gone forever either. So. We've we've heard we've heard your request and your screams of rage. Yeah, and uh, Daza Thrill Seeker's right. Yes, you can shoot while crouching. Um, yes, that's yes. pretty important because you know because if if you're sneaking around and using a uh, suppressor, we definitely want that whole thing to work. You know, we don't want you to have to stand up and be suddenly make yourself more visible in order to uh, to shoot a zombie with a suppressed firearm. Oh, oh my god, a chicken! No, Andy does not put pineapple in his pizza. Oh my. god. God, that's a I just had a delicious pineapple pizza. Thank you. I don't believe you. <laughs> hey, people are allowed to have different tastes. It's fine. That's right. Uh, as I mentioned, then that as long as he's eating that pizza, there's more of the good pizzas. For you me. want to know why <laughs> we get uh, pineapple pizza on pizza <laughs> days? Because Lisa loves me and knows that I love pineapple and pepperoni. I'm kind of surrounded by you weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is something you like that I think is disgusting. Andy. Probably. Uh, do things still progress and happen when you're away from the game like the original? No. Nope. Yep. Uh, nope. The, the, By yep, I mean nope. The, the super cool idea, right? Like, it, it, it felt right at the time, but the problem is that there are just a lot of weird unintended consequences that come from that behavior and ultimately turned off a lot more people than it excited. Yeah. So uh, It looks well, like we're we hitting away, one of these weird we streaming frame rate spikes right now where... For some reason, our our, our capture uh, our capture stuff is is giving us problems, and it's making it look like the game's got a low frame rate. I promise you, that's only happening on the capturing side. Yeah, it's mine's buttery smooth over here. <laughs> now there's a location with all buttery. the requirements of a good outpost. 
Oh, so uh, yeah. a AZ is asking, sure. uh, what's up with co-op base building? Like, when you're playing a co-op game, um, can everyone contribute uh, to building the base? Uh, so the way it works is when, when you are the host of the game, when, you're, when everyone is playing in your world and your unique story is the one that everyone's experiencing, you're the one who owns the base and you're the one who makes the decisions about the base. But that's actually a really quick, the, that's the quick and easy part of it. Like, you know, simply opening up the base screen, selecting, uh, you know, what things you want to upgrade, what things you want to build. Uh, you know that's that's really fast, and so yeah, that's the host's job. That's all zombies. But everybody needs to participate in um, in, in you know scavenging and fighting the zombies and and collecting the resources that you oh, need that in order to upgrade yeah. the base. Like that's that's definitely a group uh, that is a group experience. And if you're a co-op player in somebody else's base, you can't you know you can't go in and like break yeah. down their facilities. You can't upgrade their facilities. You can't you know spend all of their resources on things they didn't want. But you can spend your resources in their crafting stations and stuff to, to, to make your own consumables and things. So if they've got a machine shop that can, you know, that's got uh, like C4 unlocked or something like that, you can you can use your own ammo resource and make C4 uh, so that you know so that everybody can kind of share the facilities, even though one person's in charge of building and controlling. Uh, Captain Assassin, if you want to trade with other folks, uh, with other players, uh, you, you can, it's like a lot of other games where you, you can drop stuff on the ground and they can pick it up. Oh, uh, King of AR asks, how challenging was it to write a narrative that was coherent but still open to player choice? Uh, it was fascinatingly challenging. <laughs> uh, again, kind of like the, the, the answer with the VO dialogue earlier. Uh, there aren't a lot of games that do this. Not uh, the same way. I mean, it doesn't even feel like writing a story so much as writing a bunch of little pieces that yeah. can become a story. Right. The, the, the game that we built uh, is designed for you to end up, you know, at the end of it, you will look back and say, hey, I experienced a story. But we don't know what that story is going in. Yeah. We know yeah. some of the major beats. Like, like, obviously, we're, you're going to start with the tutorial and then have a few early missions that teach you how the game works. But once that's done, the game opens up and you will experience any of a, a sort of semi-random array of smaller stories that react to your choices and decisions, including your decisions to ignore them, potentially. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you decide, like, what kind of ending you want to be striving towards. Right. And you decide when to pursue it and how. And so it, it, it plays out. The story of our game is much more like the story of, say, a game of Civilization or something than, it is, than a traditional action-adventure game's linear story. Or The story. Sims. Or The Sims. Yeah, exactly, where you're, you're making the decisions about what kind of experience you want to have. And then the story elements of the game sort of come together to yeah. sort of me to meet there, those choices that you're making. There's no chance whatsoever that the game you play will be the same as anybody else's game. Like it's just it's inconceivable the odds against that happening like I can't even begin to calculate them. And not <laughs> just because I was an English major. Uh, yeah, you you somebody asked about the that action hero story arc that I was talking about earlier. Plenty of people will play the game and not experience that right away. Some folks might hit it in Very early, a couple of hours. Others yeah. you might play it for 30, 40 hours and still not have have experienced that little arc. And that's, we think that's a, actually a big feature of the game is that everybody's experience is different. When you go watch somebody else's stream, yeah, it's going to be a version of the story that you've never seen. There may be a couple familiar beats, but even if they hit a, a part of the story that you've seen before, it's probably going to play out differently. Yeah, that's actually one thing. We were thinking a lot about the fact that people, um, you know, the original game, people liked to stream it, you know, it was because there was so much kind of randomness and surprise. It's like you never quite knew what you were going to see. It made, it made the game interesting to stream, but we really wanted to lean into that with this one. We wanted this game to be very streamable uh, because that's something that, you know, after playing, you know, State of Decay, I got into streaming, and a lot of folks around here, you know, are, in, are, in, are into it just as a, as a medium, whether as viewers or as streamers. And we wanted this game to be something that was fun to stream and fun to watch other people stream. Um, Kat asks, can you finish the game on just one map or does it play out over the three maps? Uh, so you can end the game as quickly or take as long with it as you want to. The three maps are there so that you know, as your community progresses and you exhaust the resources on a map, you can keep playing indefinitely by moving from map to map. Um, and so... 
so if you're if you want to play a kind of a very sort of chill, <laughs> relaxed, long-term game, then you can go through all three maps and then come back to one of the ones you've been to before and have kind of a refreshed version of it. And you can just keep playing through those maps as long as you want. And then you decide at what point you really want to race towards the ending and, and end the game. So if you want to do that very early when you're in your first map, you can totally do that and then start your next game and be in a different map uh, and do a different game in a different map. Or you could stretch one game across many maps and then only end it, you know, much, much later. And that is, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Somebody asked about, uh, did I have a favorite voice actor to work with? I am not prepared to play favorites with my voice <laughs> actors. They're yeah, all seriously. wonderful to work with. Uh, seriously, I, I had an amazing experience with these folks. They're, they're all pros. Uh, they're friendly to work with, very gracious. Uh, and they got some really experience. good reads. Really yeah, good reads. I, I, I couldn't be happier about the crew of, of actors we put together for this game. Oh, uh, so the real Hambo says, uh, you notice that while aiming, sometimes your crosshair's wide and sometimes your crosshair's narrow. Like, what, what, Depen what controls depends, that? Depends on the firearm. And so, like, a pistol is likely to have, have, like, a wider one. A shotgun's likely to have a much wider shotgun's one. shotgun's going to have a really wide one because there's no way to pinpoint where that thing's going. Yeah. But then something like a sniper rifle will have something very tight or, like, a target pistol that's yeah. deliberately very high accuracy. You know, that'll have a tighter one. Yeah. And then and then also, I think that some of the skills, like sharp shooting, also play into that. So here's, uh, here's a shotgun. It'll never get... <laughs> any tighter than that. Any tighter than this because this is sort of just the general area that we're going for. But then if I switch to... Somebody else and their gun. The guy was lazy, just hanging out. So uh, Dan thirty one asks. Um, oh wait, are you? Oh yeah, you're still and showing you the crosshair. That when oh I, yeah. When, if it this gun, this pistol has a uh, has a, a scope on it, a little oh, yeah. a little pistol well, sight yeah. on it, and you'll see when I when I zoom in, it gets even tighter. So uh, Dan31 asks, is there an option to allow your base always to be available to your friends? If, you mean, by, if by always you mean while you're not playing the game, they can go visit your base. Um, unless you wanna, if you want to leave your box on all the time running the game, sure. Yeah, you could do that. Uh, but it, that, that's not really the most effective way to play. Um, that's a good way to let everybody in your community starve to death. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, unless your friends are actually like, out there. Actively trying to feed them, yeah. Bringing food back. But, uh, but yeah, so... So, so there isn't really that kind of... If what you mean is, is there a way to make it so that your friends can can build your base or destroy parts of your base kind of willy-nilly as they want to? Uh, no, we didn't open that up, mo mostly just because there's just a lot of ways for that to go wrong and be frustrating. Uh, somebody earlier asked um, if the game is possible. Uh, I know that, like, I think during the demo we made it not possible. Um, but uh, actually, yeah, so right here, he opens up the pause menu, and the zombies are still moving. Uh, that is how it works when you are open to multiplayer. When you've got yeah. multiplayer turned on, and, and you set up so that friends can drop in and join you at any time, uh, or even if you've got it set up to invite only, we leave that open so that if you sent an invite to a friend an hour ago, and they just got it, and they come and join your game, they don't come your j join your game, and it's paused, and they're like, what, what's going on? Is this game broken? You know, and, and giving you ways to sort of, like, troll your friends by pausing the game on and nice. off while they're playing. We didn't give you that, but if you want to just play solo, uh, then you can just turn off multiplayer, and then pausing kicks in, and you can totally pause as much as you want. I know, you know, a lot of folks, uh, including me, have families, have things that can easily come and distract them, pets, you know, and you want to be able to pause a, a stressful game like this uh, and go deal with whatever your life throws at you. And so we definitely wanted to make sure that there was some way that you could make sure that you could pause the game. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so just be antisocial and you can pause the game all you want. Yeah, and actually, uh, so that, that, that plays into uh, Corbulo's question, uh, you know, confirming that offline mode exists for single player. Yes. So if you turn off multiplayer, you can play this game completely by yourself. Uh, that You don't even need to, you know, you can unplug the Ethernet cable from the back of your box, whatever. You can keep playing the game, and, and, and not only can you keep playing the game, but you can complete the game and pause the game whenever you want to. So it's great. Um... Tearless Disc asks, um, how's character building regarding abilities like Nimble and Powerhouse? Uh, do you want to uh, get someplace safe and open up the uh, community screen, uh, Brian? We can kind of show them how, the, how some of this stuff works. So if you look at any of these characters, you got these four skills, right? Cardio, Wits, Fighting, Shooting. Uh, Amon here is pretty close to leveling up his shooting uh, to the max. Whenever Amon gets his shooting, get that, gets that last shooting star, um, shooting star, uh, he, he'll be able to level up his shooting 
uh, to a to a new specialized we'll version of the skill. Has, oh, so oh, yeah. There's, there's yeah. So, oh, yeah. Let's do that. So let's check out cardio. So she has seven stars in cardio. She can choose a specialization. So she can either choose acrobatics, which will make her dodging and climbing faster, uh, or marathon, which will give her more uh, you know stamina when she's when she's running. So marathon always the answer. <coughs> Oh, I run far, run fast. I always, I always switch it up. <laughs> um, and then here we got I fighting. Like running. Fighting's got the option. You know, you could go endurance, uh, which gives you more health, or sword play, which gives, unlocks some special abilities with uh, bladed weapons. Okay, I always go for that. One. Yeah, because yeah. you can sweep the sweep the legs off zombies, okay. uh, and you and your dismemberment oh, this is goes great. up. We got wits. So this guy can go resourceful, which means you can carry more stuff. Uh, just have more deeper pockets uh, versus stealth, which means zombies have a harder time seeing you. Uh, and so, abilities like the old abilities, like Nimble and Powerhouse and stuff, this is the version of that that we have in State of Decay 2. So, Powerhouse is a cardio option for some characters. Um, and the equivalent of Nimble is Acrobatics. Acrobatics is the sort of Nimble-ish uh, skill, um, in, uh, and it's also, it's also a cardio skill. Um, and so, so, yeah, so if you're looking for that kind of stuff, that's where it is in the game. And also, so, yeah. you'll notice that this guy also was good for fighting. Oh yeah, that's right. But, um, but he doesn't have sword play. But different, different, different uh, options. Different options. Yeah, and so some people have traits that specifically say, okay, because this guy used to be a baseball player. Um, he's definitely striking is going to be, you know, because the the thing about swinging a bat, that's a skill he's going to be good at. Other characters don't have any traits like that, and so they kind of get a random assortment of options. But but the way that the system is set up, it, it ensures your characters are going to you know have a variety of different skills, and each person's going to have kind of a unique offering that other players, other characters don't necessarily have. So you know, it might. I wonder if I can flip the car to, to show. Uh, it's hard to flip cars now, it man. It's, it's, it's super hard. hard. Well, let's not make bold claims like that. Uh, so no one in particular says, I saw on the Xbox Game Hub for uh, State of Decay 2, people are already playing and earning achievements. That's true because when, we, when the game hasn't come out yet, people um, at our company and people at Microsoft have to test the game in the wild. We have to test the process of downloading it from the store, playing it at home. We don't want to just only test it in our offices because that's not going to be a legit test. We have to really know that the game works. And so, uh, so what they do is they have several of us, you know, many of us take the game home and start playing it. So if you're seeing evidence that people are playing the game early, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing uh, professionals, you know, that are involved with the game testing it out at home. Uh, and so, yeah, so people are already getting achievements. In fact, the uh, ch achievement tra tracking websites out there have already got the full accounting of all our, our achievements. Uh -huh. You can go check those out. We had a lot of fun making those uh, happen. So uh, this is, this I'm is curious how many of you are going to get some of the references in the achievement names. So here's a cool, here's one of the cool things we've added. Um, we have way more car cars and car variants this time, and mm -hmm. this is one of the this is one of the really neat ones. It's uh, again, it we're hitting another one of those weird frame rate spikes coming from our capture stuff. Sorry about that. But go ahead. This is this is one of those uh, our version of one of those cars that does like street view mapping, and so as you're driving around, you're going to be mapping better, and you don't have to get <laughs> out and do like you know. Yeah, like if you drive if you drive slowly with this car, it's going to detect sites and identify them for you at a much wider radius than if you were just walking around or, or driving in another car. Um, we got a question. Nos37 asks, if you're a guest player, can you do things like sort ammo at the storage facility? And, uh, and whose resources will that use? So if you're visiting somebody else's game um, and you want to use their facilities, you can. You're going to spend your resources from your home community, and those things that you build are going to go straight into your inventory. So, uh, so you're using the facility. So, so you know, if they've unlocked some special crafting option, you get the benefits of their crafting options, but you're still spending your resources, and, uh, and, and, and you're the one who gets the benefit of it. Uh, plague zombies. There's a lot of plague zombies. This zombie was crafty. Oh, there's another horde coming in. Boy, that uh, yeah, I that grenade was not effective. Yeah, and we're still we're and we're still getting ca uh, like some capturing lag here, which is bothering the crap out of me. Um. For powerful game, uh, Weagle One is right. There are definitely traps and things you can deploy. Uh, we've got traps that uh, that distract zombies, where like zombies will rush over to like say a boombox you've left on the ground, 
And, uh, and I did that earlier too. You did that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You you can see that if you yeah, if you kind of scroll back, uh, scrub back in the stream. And then um, and there's also landmines and and also remote mines, uh, things that you know you can place an explosive down and decide when it goes off. Noisemakers can draw them in and and then you can actually place a mine and then place a noisemaker. And so they'll run up to it and then. There's uh, C4 that you can trigger. And also, I think, and remote box mines, too. So you can yeah. eat, like, kind of have the low-tech and the high-tech versions of yeah. it with different scales of explosion. Uh, for Powerful Game asks, uh, any silent options? Uh, so you've got the stealth skill, which makes a lot of the stuff that you do silent. And then also we have suppressors for guns. And uh, different melee weapons also have different noise levels. So, you know, it always makes noise when you are, um, when you're just sw swacking at a zombie. But uh, different different weapons make different amounts of noise. If you can sneak up on one from behind, though, you can take it out without making any noise at all. I just put on a, um, a suppressor. Uh, Daditude asks, if you kill a bloater with a Molotov, will it burn off the gas? Ex very quickly, yes. <laughs> it will burn off the gas. Yeah, yeah actually, um, that's one way to get rid of the bloater gas. Yeah, even if the cloud is just sitting there by itself, right? You can still hit it with a Molotov. I believe so, unless they've changed that. What's this? This is... C4? Oh, here's C4. I'm going to go deploy some C4, because it's fun. Can't possibly go wrong. I'm just going to pack this guy around, too. Hey, dude, come with me. Nobody move or the zombie gets it. I'm going to throw him out. <laughs> and then I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to deploy some C4 next to him. <laughs> and you see that new icon that appeared that Oh, oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Got to be quicker, man. Maybe Beth. maybe it's better minutes. that you didn't see. Your 10 minutes is up. These are all possibilities. Uh, <laughs> luckily that's not going to happen in the version of the game you guys are going to get. <laughs> There's not a 10 minute timer. Uh, the version of the game you guys get. Everyone's like, no! <laughs> Would you like to see more? Give us one dollar, please. <laughs> yeah, right. We have a Patreon site now. We don't. Uh, let's see. We It looks like we're back at the uh, brewery. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess around with the brewery base for a second because this is a cool base. Monkey Mojo uh, says that uh, he, he that he's he's not impressed with the number of zombies and the and the terrible situations you've been getting in. I th you must have joined the stream late because there have definitely been some situations Brant has gotten in that look that were completely Let's make overwhelming. Some whiskey. Yeah, let's make whiskey. Yeah, so you can, um, there's, there's various uses of alcohol in the game. Alcohol is useful, uh, it's a useful um, resource for, for making medical supplies, uh, but you can also um, make it into sellable items that, that, that people, that other enclaves uh, desire quite a bit. I just made it into fuel because fuel is so key in this one now. Uh, Jamwes1991 asks, uh, can we leave one map and enter another in the same playthrough? Yes, you totally can. Uh, there's, a, there's an option when you've, when you've upgraded your command center, which is like your radio room, um, you c there's an option there to, to find map exits, uh, to basically to sort of scout outside your map and find other places to live. Boom. And if you do that, you know, after Water that action power. is complete, you get some places on the map that you can interact with where you can actually just like pack up your whole community just and go to a like new place. Paradise. Um, and then once you arrive, you got to find a new base to settle and everything. But you're basically the whole the, a new map you go to is always fully refreshed. It's got you know everything ready to scavenge, and so that's kind of what you do when you when you run out of scavenging opportunities at your current map. So I just I just started a whole bunch of uh, construction projects, and now we can see that um, that my threat level is really high because I have a whole bunch of stuff going on at the base. <laughs> Making lots of noise, yeah. So, so you're, it's much more likely that zombies are going to attack your base. And if you've got plenty of ammo and stuff, your people can often fight off the zombies while you're away. But if you don't, you need to come home and deal with it because the zombies are going to wreak havoc in your base if you don't. Yeah. The other nice thing about the uh, brewery base is it has its own little tasting room. Yeah. i got to apologize again for my... I, I feel like I need to, like, maybe my capture card is just dying and I need to get a new one or something because we've not usually had these problems before with uh, the frame rate on the capture card. So I need to, we're going to be getting a new uh, streaming setup in here pretty soon. And so when we do that, we'll need to make sure that we've got better performance on this stuff because it's really annoying me to have this, you know, to be looking over a Brant screen and seeing a good frame rate and then we're showing you guys this crap here. So... <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Rogue Army, uh, no comment on that. Um, let's see here. So uh, Shadow uh, asks, if your character dies and you switch to another from your community, can you run out of people? Yeah, eventually you can lose your last character. Um, and that, at, at that point, you know, you're get, you're, that particular story ended in tragedy. There's lots of zombie movies that end that way, right? Uh, you know, where, where it just ends with everyone dying or almost everyone dying. Um, and that is, that is a legitimate um, ending that your story might have. So, you know, we, we, we take those endings just as seriously as the victorious ones. This is not, I mean, the original game, we would just keep feeding you new characters until you eventually won uh, except in breakdown where you know if you oh, or, or in both of our actually in both of our expansions um, if you lost all of your characters that was it you know it, it was over and we've we've kept we've kept that philosophy going into state of k2 if you lose all your characters that's it your game's over you gotta I start to show over. off breakable cow technology <laughs> yeah. hey there got an offer for you uh, yeah, so Rami XP, the video is also studying, stuttering for us, and it's driving me crazy. Like, uh, uh, I mean, this, the stream's almost over. This is probably the last segment we're going to do. But, yeah, I think something on... We've got two PCs set up here. One of them is playing, just playing the game. The other one is capturing that and is streaming uh, to Twitch and Mixer. And that PC, the one that's doing the streaming, is having some kind of weird problem, and uh, it's 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 messing things up. So sorry about that, guys. I'm gonna try to figure out how to solve that problem before the next time we stream, if I can. Real zombie and asking if uh, survivors at your base could die when you're when it's attacked by zombies. Absolutely, I've yeah. seen that happen. I had a, a, a juggernaut wander into my base uh, in the middle of a, of a, a siege, so to speak, and uh, you know I wasn't paying enough attention. He just tore a dude in half. Like it, it happens. Uh, Gotta, gotta pay attention to your folks. Yeah, totally. Um, do we do we, when somebody when one of your friends is in trouble? Usually we put like an icon over them, like when we announce it to you, so you can get close. Like when they're starting to really be, you know, under threat of dying, we make sure that you notice so it doesn't just happen you know, blindly unless you're really oh. not paying attention. Oh yikes! Wow. And still, still the car has not flipped. Everyone. I, I keep trying to it's show just... people how we can flip cars back, and it's just not. It's not cooperating. We've just improved the game too much. So rest assured, if a car is resting on its hood, you can get it back over. Yeah, oh, man. The way the capture is just... Is, is oh, here we go. Here right we go. Now. There we go. So okay. I can either do it... I can do it one of two ways. I can try and do it with the, with the stick and just kind of do that, or else I can get out of the car. Kill the zombies. Kill zombies. Bam. Bam. Man, that was so great, and it was oh. the the, the, <laughs> oh, fr let me. the frame rate was oh, too bad. Too clever now. Oh man! Oh no, that's. <laughs> <laughs> is it because of the rock? Is it like is it just too much crap it might around be because it? Because the rock. So okay, I've just shown you that there are ways to get the car stuck, oh. but is there another car around here? Because you can knock it over with the you other car. You can knock it over with the other <laughs> car. I'm not going to last long enough to What's worth death that. by Juggernaut or Feral? Oh, man. Uh, they're both. I mean, the character's dead. Either way, right? They're, they're, equally, more, more demoralizing. they're equally not cool. <laughs> death by a Juggernaut feels more inevitable to me. <laughs> See, Death by Juggernaut, I mean, I expect it. Death by Feral is just terrifying. I, I hate ferals. They freak me out. Because they dodge your... Like, when you're about to fire your gun at them, they, they're like, nope. Right. So, I'm going to steal you guys' uh, Actually, I'm going to steal my camera for just a second here. Uh, I just want to prove... I've got something to prove. Jeffrey's really, really <laughs> worried about I'm this. really worried about this frame rate thing. Look! Look! You, can you see? The frame rate is totally smooth on his machine. And it's just, <laughs> it's just our machine where it's a disaster. It's just my machine over here that's this, that's, that's a disaster. So I think they believe you. I just needed everyone to see that. Like seriously, <laughs> it's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> All right, we're getting we're getting close to the end here. So I think whenever this uh, demo segment is done, that's when we're gonna that's when we're gonna cut it off. Do cards need to be unlocked? You, can you just get them and them drive? Everybody leaves their keys in the car. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. This is the this is not only the apocalypse; it's small town apocalypse. We know that everybody is safe and law abiding. So yeah, all cars are unlocked and easy to get into. Because otherwise, like this world's 
nasty enough without experiencing the I'm running away from a horde and I find a card. Oh, it's locked. Sorry, you're dead. So I'm gonna quickly. I don't know if the, if this will set, if this will help if I just switch away for a second. No, I don't think that's actually doing anything. Grrr. Sorry. Wait. <laughs> You put so much effort into working on the performance of your game. Uh, not me personally, but I've watched a lot of programmers do that. <laughs> and, and, then, and, oh, and then the stream just kills your frame rate. Somebody asked if stealth is still a thing. After you kill a zombie, let's sneak up on one. Oh, yeah. Good idea. I've just been stealth killing zombies for like the last five minutes. <laughs> well, we weren't talking about it, though, so it wasn't real. All right. Oh, they're chasing oh. you. Once they're chasing you, it's a little too late to stealth. Yeah, I can't stealth this guy. He cut his arms off, though. Where's his, um, where's his zambi? I finished the Oh, there's one. Meh. Oh, we're gonna sneak up on this guy. Yep. Look at this. <laughs> he's, like, he's busy. Oh, stealth kill. Blech. There, there you is. go. We got, and there's multiple animations for that, depending on what the zombie's already doing. Uh, my favorite is the one where you just like reach up and just just do the ear hit right yep. there. It's a good one. Uh, so, Mercenary Man, uh, the zombies, yeah, when you cut both the arms off of zombies, it, it could only attack with its mouth. And, it, and it's, it, 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 it's a much slower kind of, uh, kind of attack. It, it can't just do those super quick swipes anymore. It can't grab you either. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, the oh, grabbing doesn't work, there. so... Mr. Okay, we got 30 seconds left, Mr. which is great because then we won't have to worry about the frame rate disaster on our capture card anymore. Oh no, <laughs> it went out. No. I just want to kill that guy. <laughs> well, we got bloater and feral coming in. I want to get the bloater to, to sprint. S why don't you stealth, stealth, ah! kill, stealth kill the bloater? Ah! Watch him. He's like, I'm going to get you. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> oh, man. Uh-oh. And it's over. There we go. Okay. Well. Woo! Okay. So that was uh, State of Decay 2. And uh, we've got like three minutes left. If anybody's got any last-minute questions there in, uh, on Twitch. Uh, Mixer is we also We don't have there. any information on the, on the beta stuff because that's all... It's all run by the publisher, yeah. Yep. So you'll so if you got questions about that, uh, go to uh, State of Decay on Twitter at State of Decay on Twitter and bother that guy, uh, and, <laughs> and he'll have he'll if anyone has the answers for you, they will. So if you signed up for the beta for the technical beta, go check in there. Uh, we really we just don't have any answers. We we're, it's not we will get a, any any um, bugs or performance issues or whatever that get reported from that. We'll get those, but we're not actually the ones running the thing, so we don't know anything about it. I saw the question, how long would Andy last in a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> Twelve minutes. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I would not last very long either. Uh, I have no useful skills, so there is not a community on the planet that would take me in. My best bet is that uh, my wife, who actually has useful skills, would be allowed in somewhere, and then <laughs> I could sort of piggyback on that and get in. But no, uh, not a lot of room for... Uh, storytellers and writers and such. It's like, uh, can you shoot a gun? No. Can you build it? No. <laughs> so uh, Black Ops asks if, uh, if there's any other special cards besides the mapping car. Um, as far as having something very special, like that special ability, the mapping car might be pretty unique in that regard, but... Police what? car has oh, sirens. sirens. Oh, that's right. And, and the ambulance. The ambulance, ambulance also sirens. sirens. Little, little draw zombies. Got Those about that. Cool. Also, make sure when you find, when you walk up to new cars, check the trunk. There might be useful stuff in them yeah, already. Yeah, especially police cars and ambulances yeah. might have nice stuff in the back. So that's that's pretty valuable. And then there's a lot of just differences between cars. Some cars have really good fuel efficiency. Some cars have a lot of storage capacity. Uh, and so you know the differences between cars are much kind of bigger just generally. Uh, the basic stuff. Uh, there's a lot more differences that you can find uh, than you could. What happens game. when the host survivor dies? Uh, when the host survivor in, dies in a multiplayer game, in multiplayer, uh, basically the same thing that happens when uh, when a client uh, when when a, when a guest dies, which is that the host gets to choose another character to be, but instead of like you know going back to their base, they actually arrive somewhere near where everybody else is, so the group can kind of stay together. So 
Yeah. Uh, people have at, were asking me a lot of questions about that earlier, and I actually wasn't dead certain because we'd gone through a lot of different options. So I went like, uh, so like Devin and I set up a game, and we went and just died several times to make sure we knew exactly what happened. So that's what happens. Uh, Asgard, so, yes, you'll get hurt if you jump off a tall building. Yes. Very badly. You usually actually get an injury from it. So so injuries are, are, are worse than just losing health. It's like it's a long-term thing that you need a, a good infirmary to take care of or a first aid kit. Um, so don't do that. Try not to jump off things. Uh, <laughs> Coconut, if the, whole, if the host's entire base dies while you're playing with them, then their game is over. You guys might need to start, figure out something else to and do. And you weren't very helpful. Yeah, I, really they should wonder you know, what kind of friend you are uh, if, if, if you let that happen. If I die as a guest, I lose that character in my game. Yes. Yep. That is real. So, you know. Consequences are real in this game. Yeah, Ablative. So, if you come to my game and mess around, I'll make sure your character dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, we are out of time. It's 3 o'clock. Thank you all for coming in here. And uh, it's been really great chatting with you all. And uh, less than two weeks until the game is actually out. And We're when it's final out, countdown. Brian, Brian, do you want to come in and say Brian, hi? Brian, come in and say hi. Can I, can I crash your stream while I wait for my Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we're just about yeah, to end, so. Both Take of the spot. cameras. We're not, we're not playing anymore, Take so. My spot. Uh, we're delaying 15 minutes, but can you patch up for me? In here? Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. Sure. Yeah, we've got a meeting in here in just a second, and so we're, 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 we're wrapping up. But yeah, uh, Brian wants to say hi before we go. Hi, hey, it's been quick, a while. Everyone, hi, ask, everybody. Brian, ask Brian base questions. Quickly, big complicated system oh, questions. Sorry, we're out of time. Oh, sorry, we're out of time. Oh, we can't do it anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. I no, mean, seriously, we are going to say goodbye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, bye, everybody. We'll see you later. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah Brant's uh, like, torso says goodbye, too. <laughs>